How did you start to get involved in this idea of testing your home and, and creating a very healthy environment where you live? So in my 20s, I had a business. We designed and created the environmental systems for nightclubs and restaurants and high-end churches where we would do the sound, the lighting, the video, the acoustics, anything to stimulate the body, the positive side of the environment. I really fascinating how the outside world does affect the inside world, our mind, our body. It's a big interaction. Uh, about 12 years ago, although I was living in a home that ended up having a bunch of mold in it, I was restoring an old vehicle, sanding on the on the metal, and it had lead in it. And I got lead poisoning, also a stressful relationship at the time. So kind of a perfect storm. I got really sick. Started realizing oh, there's a negative side to the, the environment. And we kind of shifted into, instead of creating these cool stimulated environments, let's focus on creating healthy environments. And kind of shifted our focus into that and just kind of been off and running ever since. Uh, just because I realized there's such a big problem in the world that with these unhealthy homes, the sick building syndrome is the term that's coined um, off of these buildings. And it's a big problem. And, and then there's not a lot of people addressing it. So that's where we kind of stepped up to the plate and we're trying to handle that problem. When you look at sick building syndrome, which is uh, something more and more people, I think, are, are starting to acknowledge or even understand that, that we are living in an environment that can absolutely contribute to sickness. What are some of the things that really stick out to you? Is there one thing that's that's bigger than the rest that really you see i would say mold and emf are right there neck and neck as far as affecting people uh, right underneath that i would say chemical usage poor air quality our water is getting pretty nasty i mean it's all up there but really mold and emf are the two big ones with mold you know what what's the first step you tell someone as far as hey i think i have mold if they've ever had any kind of leaks or water damage or water issues or flooding, or if they don't feel well in their home, but then they leave, they go on vacation, they go to work and they start feeling great again, or they wake up with stuffy nose, respiratory type issues, that's when we're going to want to start looking at mold. And then what would you recommend testing wise? Because there are a number of different tests out there, right? That the medical community recommends. There are now kind of commercial kits you could purchase online. What, what do you recommend? I recommend we can look at everything because there's so many different tools and every tool will give us a little slice of information, but not one single test is going to give us the whole picture. So air samples are going to tell us what's in the air right now that we're actually breathing, but it's not going to tell us historically. It's not going to tell us if there's anything behind the walls. A lot of times we can get false negatives. Uh, Hermes on the other side of that is going to tell us what's in the dust, what's historically been in the air. But a lot of times that's going to give us more on the false uh, positive side. Yeah. Uh, because the thing is that every home has mold. It's just a question of how bad is the mold and what kind of mold is in the house and how sensitive are the occupants of the home. That's what's going to ultimately determine if we have a mold problem. So when we swipe the dust, we do an army and it shows, hey, you have mold in your house. Well, yeah, every every home has mold in it. How bad is it, though? That's the problem. And are we getting affected? So. There's those we could, you know, a good visual inspection really goes a long way. And then historical talking to the, the occupants, what has this house gone through in the last 10 years or 15 years or however old the house is, how many flood events have there been? Has there been big leaks? How did those get addressed? And so we got to look at everything. And that tells us the big picture. Yeah, it's really difficult these days because most people move into a home and they have no clue what that history is of the home. And a lot of times you're not going to just see black mold on a wall and say, oh, I could, you know, picture it right there. That's mold. I know it's there. A lot of times it's lurking. And I think a lot of it, I, I've spoken to people like Jason Earl from Got Molds and even Dave Asprey talks a lot about molds. And, you know, the, the, they're hidden and our building materials are perfect kind of uh, conduits for molds. And then the mold expels mycotoxins, which then impact us. <laughs> 